Welcome everyone to this uh, webinar by the Mexican Social Movements Network. Um, I am very pleased to introduce you to Jose Emilio Colon Rios, who earned a BA in Anthropology and a Jury Doctor at the University of Puerto Rico, and recently finished an MA in Ethnomusicology from the Irish World Academy of Music and Dance at the University of Limerick. He's interested in Irish traditional music, particularly alien pipes in Latin America. And his master thesis titled The Cuban Pipers, the Spread of Alien Pipe Piping in Cuba, explores the arrival of the alien pipes in Cuba. He is also interested in protest songs in Latin America, for which he has done research of protest songs in Puerto Rico and Chile. He has presented his work at the International Council for Traditional Music, in Cork, Ireland, and the International uh, Backpipe Conference in 2020, and has a forthcoming article about protest songs in Puerto Rico titled The Role of Music and the Resignation of the Governor of Puerto Rico, Ricardo Rosselló, in the summer of 2019. For anybody who might be watching this one, uh, but missed the first one, Jose actually delivered another webinar a couple of weeks ago on protest songs in, in Puerto Rico. And both uh, this webinar and uh, the one that we uh, hosted two weeks ago will be available on YouTube in due course, okay? So uh, just to let you know that um, this one is being recorded just as we recorded the previous one and you'll be able to watch it uh, shortly um, on the Mexa YouTube channel. So, Without further ado, let me welcome Jose, who will speak for about 35 minutes, and then there will be time for questions and further discussion. So the floor is yours. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning or good afternoon to all of you. Um, um, so again, my name is Jose Emilio Colón Rios. I am from Puerto Rico. I am based in Puerto Rico, and I will talk today um, about the research that I have been doing lately. It's about the protest song in Chile. I, I, I tell the shaping of politics through pro, uh, in Chile through protest song. And so I will start. And in October 2019, uh, there was a massive demonstration in Chile as a response to a hike in the cost of public transportation by 30 pesos, so around 38 cents, US cents. The protesters said that the uprising was not only because of the increase of the price of the public transportation. The movement was against the neoliberal forces introduced by Augusto Pinochet's dictatorship uh, that were still present 30 years after he was removed as president of Chile in 1989. During the demonstrations, there were two songs that were played constantly, El Derecho de Vivir en Paz, or The Right to Live in, pa in Peace by Victor Jara, and El Pueblo Unido Jamás Será Vencido, or The People United Will Never Be Defeated, composed by Sergio Ortega. I want to show you some videos of the protest. Translated all the lyrics in English through the song that we are going to be discussing, so it's not easy for you. The second one is. happened in the manifestation of October uh, 2019. And after watching those videos, uh, we should ask 
ourselves why all these people knew these songs uh, when they were composed by and by whom. To answer this, uh, those questions, we have to direct our, our attention to the 1950s. In 1950s to 1960s, uh, the prevailing music genre in Chile included cuecas, boleros, and tangos, which created an idealized image of the country that didn't respond to the social realities of the time. This music suggested a life without problems, and the lyrics didn't mention the authoritarian power relationship that existed between classes, uh, landowners, and peasants. Until 1960s, people performing this music dressed in the costume of landowners, and the peasants were rarely visible since they were considered of little value, as stated by Joan Patrick Macheri, a professor of political science who wrote a book titled Chilean New Song, The Political Power of Music, 1960-1973. My cherry also indicates that the New Song movement, um, in, uh, the New Song movement presented an alternative against this conception of life in Chile, and people like Violeta Parra, uh, who became later the greatest exponent of the New Song movement, began collecting and singing peasant songs. Parra composed songs about the countryside of Chile, where she speaks of the life of the rural people, their frustration, their disappointment, et, 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 among others. There's a, I want to show you a, a, a clip of one of his most uh, more emblematic songs called Thanks to Life or Gracias a la Vida. Gracias a la vida que me ha dado tanto, me dio dos luceros, que cuando los abro, perfecto distingo, lo negro del blanco. So, Barra was able, was able to influence popular musicians, artists, dancers, and theater groups who started using their art toward the interests of the people of Chile, the peasants and the working class, by representing their voices and recovering the authentic Latin American music and arts. This period can be seen as the origin of the new song movement, which started with the 1960 generation, a generation with a social consciousness and political commitment, fascinated with discovering the rich heritage of Latin American punk and music. According to Macheri, the rise uh, of the Newsom movement and other similar movements around the world was linked to the political spirit of the 1960s. Global transformation and new political uh, winds were accompanied by reawakened interest in folk music and art. Politically uh, conscious movement embraced them as a means of asserting Latin American identity and resisting the barrage of US cultural exports. In other words, the Newsom movement presented an alternative worldview and was a tool uh, of resistance against U.S. cultural imperialism as well. According to Macheri, the new uh, song movement or Anola Cancion can be divided into three periods. From the middle, uh, from the mid 1960s to 1970s, when the movement emerged, and in 1969 it became closely linked to the campaign to elect Salvador Allende during the government of Unida Popular, Popular Unity, when the music became identified with the government, and after the military coup of September 11, 1973, when the Nilsson movement was repressed. We are going to talk now the pre allende before Salvador Allende uh, got elected. The, uh, the influence of Violeta Parra, uh, the composer that we discussed, previously resulted in the creation of the Peña de los Parras. This center was created when the children of Parra returned from Paris and settled down in Chile. In 1964, Angel and Isabel Parra, influenced by their experience in Europe, transformed a house located in Carmen 314 Santiago. When Parra, Violeta Parra, saw what her children had done, she decided to become involved with the Peña. Uh, constituting herself as, as a symbolic mother and as the mother of the new Chilean song, eventually. The Peña de los Parra created a space for musicians that were composing songs about the peasants and problems that the country was going through 
and were creating what was called later the new sound movement. According to Bravo Chiap and Gonzalez Farfán, who wrote a book about the Peñas in Chile, one interesting characteristic thing of this Peña was that people who attended, uh, it only went to listen, uh, nobody spoke. According to uh, Chiape and Farfan, uh, before he became president, Salvador Allende used to visit the Peña. Moreover, after the Cuban Revolution, uh, Cuban artists such as Silvio Rodriguez, Pablo Milanes, and Noel Nicolás also visited. The new Chilean song was in fact uh, part of a parallel movement or in Cuba called La Nueva Trova. It is worth mentioning that in other countries such as Argentina, Spain, Uruguay, similar movement took place. The Peña de los Parras became a cultural and political meeting place for people interested in the new song movement. After the success of La Peña de los Parras, Peñas were opened all over Chile. Uh, an example can be Chile Ríe y Canta, another Peña, Peña de la Universidad Técnica del Estado, Peña Chilena, among others. The Peñas became a primary venue for the new song during this period. Also, as stated by Macheri, in the Peña de los Parra, classes were offered uh, for the community to, to learn to play guitar and other instruments, art and music composition, as well to receive uh, political education. And of course, they were like a music, music performance, new songs, uh, and songs about the new song movement. La Peña de los Parra was visited by various uh, Chilean artists who participate in this type of music that Violeta Parra was making. Artists such as Rolando Alarcón, Patricia Manz, Victor Jara, and bands like Quilapayul and Inti Milimani, among others. But for the purpose of this presentation, it's important to discuss the figure of uh, Victor Jara, who was also very important for the new song movement. Jara uh, was, as I said before, very uh, fundamental uh, uh, figure for the new song movement. He came from a humble peasant family. After the death of his father, the family moved to Santiago and struggled to survive. After his mother's death, Hara thought about becoming a priest and entered uh, the seminary, but later decided not to follow that path. He met Violeta Barra in 1957. He also began, began to study theater, to sing in the chorus at the University of Chile, and to perform as a dancer and as a singer. After completing his, his theater studies, Jara become, became a well-known theater director working at the University of Chile. He began working with Quilapayun Band in 1966 and became the group musical director. By 1969, he had decided to leave the university and to focus on singing, guitar playing, uh, guitar playing and composing because he realized that with his song uh, and guitar, he could reach more people that uh, in the in, he people read much more, more people that the theater uh, allow him to. Uh, his songs, like those of Par of Villeta Parra, incorporate, incorporate the peasant and worker along with the in, using indigenous instruments. His music represented the whole country, including sector in North, and excluded from the official Chilean identity. When the Peñas were open, there was no left uh, wing party in power. Uh, in 1964, the Christian Democratic Party, led by Eduardo Frey, won the election. Frey's government was disappointing for a large part of the population, and eventually, an electoral majority began to support a socialist movement. The party that led the, uh, that movement was the Unidad Popular, or the Popular Unity, led by Salvador Allende, uh, which brought together a coalition of leftist parties. During this process, the artists who frequented the different peñas sang songs with his time phrase government, focus, focusing on his failures to address the problem faced by the country's popular majority. In 1969, for example, the massacre in Puerto Montt took place when the police attacked squatters and 10 people were killed. The Minister of Interior, Edmundo uh, Perez Sujovic, was blamed for the, for the murders. As a consequence of the, of the murder, there were manifestations about what happened and inspiring Harrison's Preguntas for Puerto Montt, that you can see here. So here, here. Usted debe responder, Señor Pérez Sukovic, 
porque al pueblo indefenso contestaron con fusil. Señor Pérez, su conciencia la enterró en un ataúd y no limpiarán sus manos toda la lluvia del sur. So, the new song movement, as stated by Macheri, joined the campaign of in, of, in favor of Allende in 1969 and were huge, a crucial component of his successful run for the presidency, bringing through art and music his message of a social change of Chile. La Peña de los Parra, previously discussed, provide us a place where musicians, many of, uh, of whom worked for Allende's campaign, could come together, develop their art, and collaborate with a community of politically conscious, pe conscious people. In 1969, the first festival of new songs took place, which re reunited political committed songwriters. In this festival, had a song, Plegaria a un Labrador, or Prayer to a Farmer, performed with Kilapayun, received the first prize. It is worth mentioning that in this festival, the new song, song movement emerged as the name of the music that the musicians were playing. Usted debe responder. This is the song that won the first prize. Levántate y mírate las manos. In 1969-1970, the popular, popular unity campaign was embraced by a broad sector of societies and committees were formed in factories, business schools, and neighborhoods and youth centers, as stated by Mike Sherry. This new interest from those sectors of society was in part due to the mobilization of the youth and peasants, and peasants inspired by the new ideals of social justice and the new song movement. The musicians of the Nilsson movement appeared with Allende and they were able to convince people to political campaign, act, uh, act and publicize Allende's candidacy. The Nilsson movement became the music of the popular unity and the music of hundreds of thousands of Allende supporters. One song called Venceremos uh, by Inti Limani became the hymn of the campaign. You can hear the song here, which all prevailed, that's the name of the music. It is important to know that the United States, according to Macheri, spent large sums of money to undermine Allende and prevent his elections. His, his election, the CIA used Chilean media extensively with an intestine propaganda to compare the popular unity with violence and Stalin's repression in the Soviet, Soviet Union. So now we are going to pass and we're going to discuss the new Soviet movement during Allende's presidency. On September 4, 1970, Allende won the, ele the president election in Chile. After Allende's election, right-wing uh, members of the Christian Democratic Party and the National Party met repeatedly to discuss how to block Allende's rise to power. The U.S. government mobilized and mobilized its intelligence resources to impede Allende's confirm confirmation as president. In fact, the commander-in-chief of the Chilean army during that period René Schneider, who didn't support uh, what, was, what was going, uh, the movement against Allende, was killed as part of a coup, the plan that didn't work. However, Congress confirmed Allende as president on October 24, 1970. Under Allende, some of the most emblematic soloists and groups, such as Victor Jara, Inti Limani, Quilapayun, and Isabel Parra, became cultural ambassadors of Chile. 
performing to the world to, com to, com to communicate to the, their music. Uh, Chile's uh, social experiment. However, Allende election brought a period of questioning within the musical movement as how their music should, should or should not change to meet the new condition as stated by Machete. In other words, their combative songs of the initiation of great government no, long, no longer seem appropriate. The new some musicians wanted to support the new government and contribute to create a peaceful road to socialism, promoting popular participation and constructing, constructing a better Chile. This is why songs composed by musicians during the popular unity government appeal to Chileans to involve themselves in, in working together to, to transform the country. An example for this is the song uh, of Victor Jara, El Lindo es Ser Voluntario, or How Nice is to be a volunteer. Qué cosa más linda es ser voluntario, construyendo parques para el vecindario, levantando puentes, casas y caminos, siguiendo adelante con nuestro destino. According to, to Macheri, the second two years of the Popular Unity Government were difficult and tense. Chile had, had shortage of food and basic product, product as a consequence of the boycott uh, and hoarding of world and middle class Chileans. Also, the United States were sponsoring the subversion of Chileans and a convulsive social cl uh, climate with many strikes by workers, terrorism, and land takeovers. The first manifestation against Allende took, took place during December of uh, 1971, and it was named the March of the Pot by right-wing upper-class women. The, this manifestation inspired Hara to write a song called Desabastecimiento, or The Shortage, that talks in a sarcastic way uh, about the protest. So in this manifestation against Allende, women were playing pot. And that's why you can hear, you can listen to Señores, voy a contarles lo del abastecimiento que causa tanto tormento a gente tan refinada. Se quejan de que no hay nada, que no soportan las colas cuando quieren juntar rabia. So other songs recorded during these times were about criticizing people that were not involved in politics, such as Ni Chicha Ni Limona, uh, You Are Neither Chicha Nor Limonade by Victor Jara. There's a video in YouTube that he talked about this song, and he said that it's, it's about people who, who are not like, who, who didn't, uh, who doesn't uh, assume a position in Chile that are not with the left or neither, neither with the right. And he, Señores, and chicha is a sweet wine made uh, from fermented grapes or apple, uh, apples very common in Chile. And that's a, 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 a state by him is like a common, like um, something that they say in Chile that when people are not in, in, like, doesn't take any, any position that like you are not uh, no, 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 you are not no, you are neither chicha nor limonade you can hear and i want to show i, I want to because for me this video is very interesting because how the face of his faces for me it has a very a, a lot of power in, in the face that he 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 he, he has while while singing La fiesta ya comenzado y la cosa está que arde. Usted que era el más quedado, se quiere adueñar del baile. Total a los olfatillos no hay olor que se le escape. Total a los olfatillos no hay olor que se le escape. Usted no es nada, no es chicha ni limón. Se lo pasa mal no siento caramba, samba su dignidad. During his presidency, Allende didn't worry about what the media said about him. With the support of right-wing parties and the US, a big part of the media in Chile was always attacking his policies. 
However, during these times of problems for popular unity, Macheri states that musicians, dancers, artists, students went to poblaciones or to shanty towns to participate as volunteers, building houses, teaching to read, raising funds, collecting winter clothes and distributing food. Children were, who were living in in several conditions were brought to university buildings where they could be warm. During this process, Hara composed one of his most uh, characteristic or emblematic songs called Luchin, dedicated to the children who live in the shanty towns and to one boy in particular named Luchin. Frágil como un volantín en los techos de barrancas. Jugaba el niño Luchín con sus manitos moradas, con la pelota de trapo, con el gato y con el perro. El caballo lo miraba. During Allende's government, for the first time, the Nisso musicians were invited to play at government events and to play as cultural ambassador of the popular unity. Chilapayun, Intilimani, Jara, Isabel, and Angel Parra, and others toured, uh, toured with, both within and out of Chile. And the Nisso movement began to win worldwide attention as Allende political experiment. It was during this period that the songs that we heard uh, in the beginning of the presentation were composed and um, referring to El Derecho de Vivir en Paz by Victor Jara, who you can listen here to the actual recording Gracias. of this song. El Derecho de Vivir Poeta Ochimí Que golpea de Vietnam a toda la humanidad, ningún cañón borrará el surco de tu arrozal, el derecho de vivir en paz. And also, it was composed in this field, El Pueblo Unido Jamás Será Vencido, The People United Will Never Be Defeated by Terry Ortega one of the most beloved hymns of the uh, popular unity. Okay. Now, and that we discuss the news and movement before Allende, with Allende, and are going, we're going to move uh, with uh, the news and movement in the military coup. So on September 11, 1973, there was a military coup uh, in Chile, led by Augusto Pinochet, who was the commander in chief of the Chilean army during, this, during that time. Yeah who hovered through the, the, then Allende, the then President Allende. Actually, he died, uh, apparently he committed suicide during the coup. Uh, in the following days, the new Chilean song suffered a big blow, the murder of Victor Jara. Jara was uh, detained uh, in the University Técnica del Estado or the State Technical University, the UTE, in Santiago, along with hundreds of prof other professors and students. He was taken to the Chile Stadium where he was visually tortured. His hands were broken and his, 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 and his body was machine gun with 44 bullet, bullet wounds. The new government tried to suppress everything that, they, that was contrary to its views and it prohibited many things that were common before the coup. The new government, as stated by Machete, restored the, the old order that was in place at the first half of the 20th century and also gave way to high culture. This is to say, it returned to the typical music, boleros, tangos, eliminating the new Chilean song and, and also exalting the high culture. As the military abruptly terminated Allende's experiment, it also brutally suppressed the cultural life of the country. 
particularly the new song movement. This mu the music of the new song movement symbolized the values of the popular music government and the popular government that had elected Allende. The military targets the protagonists of the movement to erase the memory of the government from the minds of Chileans through political terror and severe, severe economic austerity, as stated by Mike Cherry. When the military coup took place, there were exponents of the Newsom movement who were touring in Europe. This was the case of Kirapayun and Intelimani. They had to remain outside of, of Chile for a number of years in exile. Nevertheless, they became actively engaged in opposition to the Pinochet regime. Uh, traveling worldwide and performing and keeping alive the memory and promise of the popular unity. The military prohibited all art and music related to the New Song movement, which was considered communist. Uh, owning an album of the New Song movement to end in detention and torture. Instruments associated with it, like charangos, uh, kena, and sanfonia, you can see an example here, were banned and peñas were closed. Uh, there was a huge repression of, uh, of the art and media outlets that had links with the recent uh, that had linked with the recent past and uh, were banned. Only those that were not contrary to the military regime were tolerated. However, after the military coup, resistance uh, slowly started to appear, and people were listening to the new song in their houses, not loud, uh, uh, but so they cannot get caught. And as audio, as audio tapes became more accessible in the 1970s, people exchanged tape of this, uh, people exchanged uh, tapes of this music, music as stated by Machiri. It is worth mentioning that a group called Barroco Andino, which used kenas, charangos, and sanfonias instruments associated with the new song movement, was able to continue to perform it, to performances. They were playing high culture music, but using the, the, this kind of instrument. There's a video here that I want to show you. This is the band, but, but new uh, instrument, the musician playing, but this is what they sound like. <laughs> Also, the clandestine peñas began to appear, and the new song movement evolved into the Canto Nuevo, where the lyrics were more symbolic, coded, and lots of, lots of metaphor were used in the heavy atmosphere of repression. They used a new language that would allow them to escape the eye of the military regime. Therefore, there was a poetic rise in, in the songs. However, during the decade of the 80s, the clandestine peñas began to disappear again, According to Bravo Chiap and Gonzalez Arfan, during the military regime, the decline of the Peña was also a consequence of the conformist character that neoliberalism managed, managed to establish in the Chilean population. However, after 1982, the story was different. It is in this year that the crisis of 1982 occurs in Chile when the regime began to fail. At, at that moment, the Chilean population began, began to make clear its discontent with the government and started to organize. In this way, the close environment of the Peña did not make much sense and they were no longer necessary. According to Chiap and Farfan, uh, people no longer wanted to be in four walls, they preferred to act. So, as I stated, suggested earlier, an neoliberal experiment took place in Chile at the end of the 1970s. Uh, this experiment was, uh, was made through economists known as the Chicago Boys, who argued that the social and political order comes through the economic order. The system didn't regulate economy and impose a radical free market. Chile was immersed in the international market and the public enterprise were privatized. And it had an open door to foreign investing, investment. It was under Pinochet. This, uh, through this system, the culture and arts were an expense which didn't result in profits, and because of that, it has to be reduced, reduced as stated by Natalia, Natalia Violetto, Bueno, and Christian Spencer Espinos, who wrote an article about the music in the demonstration in Chile in the year 2019 to 2020. 
At the beginning, Chile grew up economically under this system, and it became an example of prosperity. However, the system produced huge inequalities in the living conditions in Chile. And because of this is that we have seen lately many manifestations in Chile as the one in 2019. The movement that started on October 18, 2019 brought a lot of questioning against the socioeconomic model implemented through the constitution of 1980 under Pinochet. High school students started the movement the protesters said that the protests were, were not about a 30 pesos hike in the cost of transportation, but about 30 years of the transition to democracy after Pinochet was removed of power in 1989. In other words, the, the political system that was established during Pinochet was, was, uh, was still present in Chile. During this manifestation, new some movement groups are set present, as shown in the video that we saw at the beginning of the talk clearly stating the importance of this movement in recent times. Also, there were some composed and reported by young musicians who were also played in the manifestations. One example is the song Cacerolazo by Anati Jokes. This song is about the use of pot during the manifestation. Ironically, as I mentioned earlier, in the past, it had been the right-wing women of upper class that started using them against Allende's government. You can listen to that song. Y el toque de queda, cacerolazo no son 30 pesos, son 30 años la constitución y los perdonazos con puño y cuchara frente al aparato y a todo el estado. Cacerolazo, escucha vecino, aumenta la benzina y a la barricada dale gasolina. Con tapa con ya frente a los payasos llegó la revuelta y el cacerolazo, 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 cacerolazo. As a result of the manifestation of October 2019, a new constitution making process is taking place in Chile. Since Chile's current constitution is still the one that was written under the dictatorship of Augusto Pinochet in 1980. So to conclude, uh, as we have seen, the Nissan movement had a great influence in Chilean politics. The Nissan movement was born out of the necessity of people of Chile to hear any kind of music, music that talk about what was really happening in the country. In this sense, the Newsom movement started as means, as means for denouncing the inefficiency of the government elected in 1964. I mean, the Christian Democratic Party led by Eduardo Frey. The Newsom movement became an ally, ally of the popular unity, composing songs for its political campaign and touring the country, expressing the ideals of the party. When the popular unity won the election, the Newsom movement changed, changed its lyrics, appealing to the necessity of the country to work together for the good of Chile. The military coup had a strong impact in the Newsom movement, but there is no doubt that it's still present in Chile society, as we saw in the videos of the manifestation in October 2019. In other words, in October 2019, protesters in Chile played songs, for, uh, played songs from the Newsom movement that had, had been composed more than 40 years ago as a way of denouncing their actual government. However, there is no doubt that young composers were inspired also by the manifestation and composed protest songs for it, as exemplified by the case of Anati Joe. By discussing the history of the Nissan movement, its implication in today's politics, the creation of the new protest song by young musicians, we can conclude that the protest songs in Chile has helped to shape the way politics are made in the country. I want to say thank you for your time, and if you have any questions. Yeah, I'm here. All right, thank you very much. Um, I would like to open the floor for questions uh, or comments. Uh, so if anybody would like to unmute uh, themselves, uh, please do so. Or maybe you want to use the chat. Um, as you prefer.
Anyone? It looks like we have no questions, Jose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hazel, unmute herself. Yeah, um, thank you very much for that. Yeah, I'd like to ask a question if I may. That was really interesting. Um, I've done a lot of work on the new song movement in Venezuela and how it developed there because under President Chavez, he used to sing a lot of the songs of, can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he used to sing a lot of songs that a Venezuelan cantautor wrote um, called Ali Primera, Ali Primera. Um, so, which I found really interesting that just by, you know, entering into the political world as an unknown and saying, oh, go and listen to the songs of Ali Primera, he was able to communicate to a whole country what he represented when he was a political outsider at the time. But moving back to Chile and your presentation, um, the new song movement You've talked about the three periods before yeah. Allende, during Allende, after Allende. I'm, I'm just really interested because um, about 10 years ago, I heard a paper on the student movement in Chile of 2011. Um, and I was really surprised that that speaker then said that these songs of Victor Jara and the, the Nueva Cancion reminded people of the terror of the dictatorship. And so they could not function to bring people onto the streets to join in with the, you know, with protests. And at that time, people were doing Michael Jackson and, and Greece, <laughs> that kind of thing. Right. So what do you think has happened now to make these songs communicate again a message? Is it just the, the passage of time or, you know, can, can you talk a bit about that? How in, you know, between 2011 and 2021, what, you know, how have these songs gained, you know, um, political, <laughs> power again, political currency in, in the context of Chile at, at the moment. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, that, that's a, a very good question. And, and it's a bit complicated. I, I remember that in 2011, I think young composers were also composing songs, of protest songs. Anita, Anati Jokes, I think, composed Chalk. And there were other songs that were composed for that movement. Again, also, like, I remember like, Calle 13 uh, uh, from Puerto Rico also like were like, talking about that, Silvio Rodriguez and stuff. Um, but um, here, what happened in, in this, uh, in 2019, oh, um, what can I say about that? Um, certainly, like, uh, maybe the, the media, how the, the media has been working on uh, about the access to, to to media has like maybe people are not as afraid as, as they were in 2011. I, uh, I I think that they were like kind of like tired of like the, the 30 years. Now they're thinking uh, about that. It's not 30 pesos. It's about 30 years of like kind of like what was what, 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 what still present in Chile that started with uh, with Pinochet dictatorship. So I think there were maybe more more like hey that that's it. I cannot tolerate it anymore. Uh, we have to, to to denounce, and we are we want to 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 go again to that period. Uh, we are going to to go back to what happened to with Allende. We are we want to look maybe uh, to, to that period because we are very interested. And, and we don't, for example, like Victor Jara's son, they were in this manifestation. They were they had like flags with Victor Jara's uh, face on it. So I think there were kind of like, hey, this happened in Chile. This happened, so we are, we want to denounce this during this time because we 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 don't want to be we don't want to 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 pass to to to, to go through this again. But what is very interesting for me as well is the what happened in the election uh, on, on Sunday, and Chile won the right one uh, for a candidate, and so there were two candidates. The, the, I mean the, the the president that the candidate that are running for a second. Uh, election in December 19, it was Gabriel Boric and the right wing uh, politician, and the right wing politician uh, won more votes. Now, now they are going to a second election, but for me, it's very interesting that even with all these manifestations, the right wing uh, candidate uh, won the, the election. Um, so let's see what happened in the 2019. 
but yeah, what I see is is because people are 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 they 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 don't want to go through that again. Uh, they don't they don't like. But I I live in in Chile in 2010, and the news and movement was very present as well. I mean, people were like I singing, and and they they know about that 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 the period and they know about what happened so yeah but again to answer your question i don't know if i answer correctly but i think it's more because people are like you know, like i'm tired of this it's not about 30 uh, years it's about it's about 30 pesos it's about 30 years we don't go through that again so we are going to to go again and to look for this song and to look for that past and to to trust to us or to, to, to us to try to 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 understand that we don't want that to happen again we don't want we are not okay with the murder of Victor Hara. we are not Okay, with the repression, so we are going using that song again, trying to, to maybe to to use them as saying, hey, uh, like I said before, we we, we are that we 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 die those songs. So I don't know if I answer you correctly because it's a bit complex, uh, a bit complicated, complex uh, question. Yeah. Thank you. Does anyone have any other questions? Anyone else? Well, if we don't have any other questions or comments, then we will draw this webinar to a close. Um, so I'd just like to thank Jose once again for delivering um, this talk for the Mexa Social Movements Network. Um, so, and thank you everyone for joining us today as well. So thank you everyone and um, catch you again soon. Thank you to you. And to thank you everyone. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.